Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is Chase, and uh, I have a guest, Mr. Chris Taylor, um, doing Season 18, Cognitive Mechanics, and we're going to be discussing uh, the Battlegrounds, but instead of looking at it from an internal point of view, we're going to be looking at it from an external point of view, which is kind of necessary, because oftentimes people just have no idea uh, uh, like in terms of like how while we could talk about inner behaviors of battlegrounds all day long we need to be talking about the outer behaviors because you could still have the same battlegrounds while internally you can have them externally with other people and I'm sure we'll talk about some other concepts as well uh, throughout uh, this uh, awesome uh, guest appearance so I I'm pretty excited about that so let's do that and uh, so, everyone, please welcome Mr. Chris Taylor, and now you all can see him finally and hear him. So, <laughs> thanks for coming to the show, man. It's yeah. awesome to have you. Hey, thanks for having me, Chris. Yeah, it's, it's great to be on. Um, so, I guess we'll just dive right in. So, we've already kind of uh, discussed, you've had your uh, lectures on the reflector functions and the battlegrounds and talked about how those go into play within a person's psyche internally. Um, and then for externally, we still do have a lot to explore there. So there is, first of all, you have a set of four psyches that are going to share the exact same battlegrounds, both for the perception functions and for the judgment functions. So if you're an EP, this is going to be the other uh, three EPs. If you're an IJ, this is going to be the other three IJs so on and so forth um they're all going to share so like the eps it's all battleground of titans with either any or se from different perspectives um now you can have a couple different ways so if you have for example two any heroes you can still have that se demon vying for its um its voice to be heard which will actually resonate with the other person as well it's almost like a battleground of camaraderie um, on that same battleground of Titans. So you'll have two any heroes going through a lot of similar struggles. Now, there's a couple different ways this can play out with that camaraderie. You can either have um, them egg each other on um, with, you know, that SE demon coming in the background and, um, you know, both of you having that same demonic function speaking. But I think the bigger clash when we're talking about battlegrounds is going to be when you have somebody who embodies um, that super ego. So your super ego is probably number one. It's the physical embodiment of that side of yourself that you're repressing through those battlegrounds. Um, now, these this is one of the reasons why I mean the super ego relationship can be rocky to say the least. Um, is pretty much they're just voicing everything that you're trying to push down, every part of you that you're trying to repress. They are literally right there in your face saying it directly to you. Um, especially for, for my superego, which is the ESTP. So um, definitely a lot of in your face with that one. So, um, But can you can you, also have this. Can, can you describe, uh, so can you describe to the audience what the Battleground of Titans is for my marriage? And how that, how that right. interact? So, yeah, come on. <laughs> so, so for that one, it's going to be a lot of well, you know, your your head's in the clouds versus well, look right in front of versus. So the SE user is obviously going to be like, well, look right, what's in your face? You're you're spending all this time thinking about what's going to happen, but you're not paying any attention to what's going on right in front of you, right? And so that that SE hero is challenging that any hero. And the any hero is coming back with, well, you know, yeah, that's that's all fine and dandy with what's going on right now, but what about all the implications from your actions that you're going about right now? Or the consequences. So you have to have that anybody. Yeah, what are the consequences? It's um and you know, especially with any demon not wanting to have anything to do anything to do with that unless it's directly inhibiting their freedom. And then and then of course they're right in your face with that as a hero. Um, what's, what's really interesting is, um, there's kind of two different ways that this can play out though. It's not always going to be just a direct clash. 
So if the heroes get to be at a standstill, just like with your within yourself, they'll end up targeting the inferior function. Um, or you could have the reverse, where the inferior function gets targeted, right? They make you uncomfortable for the any SI user. And the SE hero makes SI inferior uncomfortable, and suddenly any hero is talking about all these consequences of that action. So it can happen kind of both ways, where it, either the battlegrounds are going to challenge each other directly, or they're going to go for the um, camaraderie approach, um, which is not always a pleasant experience either, um, especially when you've got you know the battleground of titans and so much force being exerted on those weak points. It may not be pleasant right up front, but it'll be pleasant later after you realize you actually learned a lot. And yeah, they were total dicks, but at least you appreciate what the, what you learned in the process. Absolutely, because it's it all comes down to that the hubris of the hero function. And there, there's, I mean, when you're spending, especially at the apexes of the mind with the hero functions and the battleground of titans, I mean, you're putting so much force behind that function naturally that of course that other side of the coin that that mirror function is getting completely repressed and you're blind so a lot of times especially if it's it, it's almost um it's almost more cathartic i would say having the actual embodiment of it because it's not coming from a place of repression like it is with your demon function when it's internal um with with that it can actually be coming. It's it's closer, almost, almost. If they're not in their own hubris with their hero function, it's almost closer to angelic. It can be at least. Right. Um. So, but there. So I've oftentimes, you know, talked about how battlegrounds. You know, when you're looking at internally within a person, you know, from a reflective function standpoint. It's more of an indicator as to where their development is at, but not something that can be utilized to develop other people. But that's from an internal point of view. I imagine, like, for example, if you're around a, a super ego, your super ego, and it's like, and it's another person. So for me, it would be like an ESFP, et cetera. For them, it would be an ENTP or me for them. I have said in season 12, uh, which is the social compatibility lecture series, that that kind of relationship can still lead to a serious amount of growth for both parties involved because they're just not going to enable each other at all. And to make it work, they just have to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep trying. Internally, though... Yeah. It's like you're cannibalizing your own cognition. You're definitely not going to be able to force yourself to grow using reflector functions. They just are what they are. But they get sharpened, and it can be a way for growth or a pathway for growth with that external person, with that third party, you know, applying their jabs and whatnot. And then obviously them being male or female also provides additional vectors and different ways of growth and development thereof. Do you agree with that? Is that what you're seeing when you're when you're testing out this theory and using it on a daily basis in terms of people developing from an external standpoint versus an internal yeah, standpoint? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I 100% agree that it is good. Um, I think with uh, relationships, it 100% is challenging. It, it requires a lot of dedication um, to continue to just drive because growth by definition isn't comfortable right so it's it's not something a lot of people out there are just willing to undertake um i think that if you have the right mindset going into it it can be amazing for your level of growth um would it be more amazing than think, say like a golden pair because like like growth wise because golden pair highest highs lowest lows and you still have you know as we talk about the same quartet as you would a super ego type, you also have the same quartet there as well. So there's less. I don't know. Is it is it is it have the same force or is it is it, is it more forceful from a battleground perspective? I think the golden pair kind of adds a lot more in terms of an alternative perspective, like the other side of the coin in terms of like your orbit, for example. Um, it helps you kind of fill in the gaps 
right? And when there is a challenge, of course, there there is that highest of highs, lowest of lows. But with the super ego, it is direct competition trying to achieve basically the same thing. Um, it, it's and again, it just is exacerbated by the fact that that is your super ego. The advantage of having it embodied, of course, so kind of what you were getting at before is the fact that with that um, external battleground, especially if Titans and uh, especially if it's a super ego, um, you get a chance to actually see that other side that you're repressing in more of a natural state. And you're, it, it's not that this dark thing that you're trying to keep at bay. Um, like with your internal battlegrounds, because you know your super ego is constantly um, putting you into situations um, one way or another. That's well does challenge you. A lot of times, it's just a bitter side of the mind because it's so repressed. So it almost um, vindicates that side, but not the darker components of it. Not that um, really just bitter repressed side of things so it allows you kind of to see how those functions should actually be utilized um rather than just kind of stumbling in the dark with yourself um and trying to guess at those really low reception uh functions um so there's that advantage there um as, again as far as the golden pair is concerned i think there i think there really are some advantages and disadvantages but i don't think the um lowest of lows are quite the same because it's almost like um, it's almost like being strung along into those lowest of lows. Like you're both kind of so connected because of the natural integration, the natural uh, compatibility that it's almost like you're kind of experiencing it at the same time, closer to kind of being one almost. As much as I dislike the phrase, whereas the super ego, it's just it's just a direct challenge i mean and that is where probably the most amount of growth is going to come from i would say um but yeah it, it just again even to, more to so in from, that type of relationship with, even more so from an identity uh type like your own type from a camaraderie standpoint or is that more based on like you know, you want you want the super growth. You want the super ego to get the growth in the moment to get that immediate return on investment, and maybe the high camaraderie, uh, asynchronous approach of just you know you're learning from your own type will have longer term effects, or is it the reverse? I've always wondered that, and I wondered what your opinion was on that. So, so with with your own. Um... Quadra. So for me, looking at other Delta Quadra, there's almost, because it's all the same functions in the ego, there's almost this like, oh yeah, if I had kind of the experiences that they had, I could see myself making similar choices. It's almost like if you take a step back and you're watching, um, especially with the conflict type, because it's still optimistic to optimistic, pessimistic to pessimistic. Um, and then Obviously, then there's, you know, your subconscious, um, which <laughs> you absolutely can achieve. It's just a matter of you have kind of that chip on your shoulder um, about the way that they go about things. Um, the interesting one, the two interesting ones to me are, are the ego um, and then your sister type. And the ego is probably the most, the biggest case of like, I absolutely see where they're coming from, like when they're speaking, because my cognition works almost identically they may be more sub focused they may be more shadow focused but you can see yourself in them which i think is is a big difference between that and when you're talking about like the shadow where it's especially since like their child and their inferior your trickster and demon it's more of a like wow i probably would not have come to that same conclusion even if i can even if for me, being shadow focused, when I talk to INFJs, it's still there's still a lot of times where they'll say something and it's like, oh, I didn't, I can see exactly what you're saying. My functions are picking that up, but I, I mean, it would have taken me so long to even get to that same conclusion. It would have been so roundabout to get there. So I think that's kind of the difference there between like when you're talking like the golden pair versus if you're talking the same quadra. Um, now. 
what's interesting because yes, like absolutely the um, iron sharpens iron as far as the same quadra. It's it's sometimes almost a little unfair the level of production you can kind of get with that because with that a lot of it like the the um your kind of experiences in life your nurture is going to be so much more highlighted versus them um because it is the same four functions um for the conflict and the ego the most so but it's it's like you almost tend to look at each other like well you could be so much better because i especially me being si um i've experienced it so you know what's what are you doing kind of situation helpful but at the same time it's like you don't live their life you don't have their nurture so there's a fork in the road there um there is definitely a lot you can learn from them though just by virtue of having the same functions so i think if you're trying to emulate um a good route to go as you said before is to find somebody of your type that's successful and find out you know what have they experienced learn about their nurture especially i would say and figure out you know where are you diverging from what they've learned um right. but if you're like missing something you you don't it's it's like out of your grasp compatibility is probably the better way to go um and then the golden pair and the <laughs> the golden pair and the super ego are definitely two good ways of going about that the thing is is that from a compatibility standpoint i often find myself so enabled by compatible types especially in a work or a professional situation where i end up being enabled to where i am relying on them and it's like I've outsourced that entire thing to them instead of learning it myself, developing my own systems around it so that I can do it myself and potentially teach others to handle that system after the fact. And I've noticed that that slows my growth consistently. And that has been a huge problem for me personally, especially when it comes to conducting business. So what would you recommend, you know, based on that? Oh. So, so one thing I would say is you and I have, as far as that's concerned, you and I, uh, ENPs, have kind of a bigger advantage as far as taking the hits go, right? That SI aspirational can really just put up with just a lot, right? right? To the point that, you know, Stockholm syndrome becomes a thing, of course. But a lot of people out there, uh, in my experience, just can't handle that being a consistent thing. Um, I, I think I would advise caution. If you're dead set and really absolutely like growth is the biggest factor, the biggest thing on your mind, um, and you need that growth, then yes, absolutely surround yourself with that. So that way you are sharpened. Um, but at the same time that, that will wear most people down, um, very, very quickly. Well, why um, is that? And so uh, it goes back to growth being painful, right? Growth is uncomfortable. It, it's not, uh, by definition, it is not comfortable. It's not a pleasant experience to grow. And the faster you're growing, the more painful of an experience it is, typically speaking. So right. a lot of people just, they, there's a lot of types out there that don't necessarily have the endurance to sustain a relationship like that or um, a work environment like that for very long. They're going to get very burnt out very quickly. Um, so depending on your type, I mean, it might be good a good idea it's i would i would agree with you that it's always a good idea to keep that challenge around you um so you don't end up too enabled but there's a lot of people out there that i think need a little bit of that just of that reprieve from the challenge so with that in mind then if you have yeah. battleground of responsibility battleground of inhibition okay and you have either si or ni in either one of those battlegrounds are you more likely 
to be predisposed from an external standpoint, not necessarily internal standpoint, from a, but from an external standpoint, be more predisposed to have that growth track uh, compared to other types? Potentially. So with the battleground of responsibility, um, yes, you can have that because both, your, both the trickster and the parent are trying to behave in a responsible way by default. Um, so they, they might be more predisposed to, to that growth track. They might actually do pretty well with it. But at, at some point, that level of responsibility has to be flipped um, to innocence because those start with responsibility. Right, so it's it's kind of an interesting growth path with the, with the parent because you start off with it completely ignored and the the trickster is substituted in, um, and that's almost like a child raising a child. Um, for those who haven't read the article um, with uh, John Bodine, go check that out because we we delve into that a little bit. But um, the the trickster ends up being a child raising a child. So eventually, the parent comes online and. It at first just absolutely sucks at what it's doing because it's been dormant for so long. Um, you've been relying on your trickster for however long up to that point to when you start developing responsibility in your ego. Um, but then there gets to be a certain point, especially if you start focusing on the subconscious, where that function actually has to drop down into innocence. So it, I think it really depends on what part of their life they're in um, as for to depending on what part what uh growth path they're on for development whether it's their subconscious or their shadow or their ego it can depend if i, I would say an si parent that's ego focused definitely needs to be on that on that growth path um especially if their if their parent hasn't woken up yet that's a good way i would say for to get their parents to wake up um now if they're if they're sub focused i would say probably lean off of that um just to give to allow that si to be a little more relaxed a little more innocent rather than having to burden that responsibility all the time um but i think it is dependent if, if we're talking inferior hero nemesis or demon they should almost always be on that growth path 100 percent, because those functions by default are either inhibition which that needs to be overcome one way or the other right um because they're gateway they're heroic, functions and they either need right exactly so those ones i mean with the gateways those definitely need to be hammered um one way or the other if they're si hero sometimes you have to kind of break that si hero to get it to actually realize it can't do everything so it can actually pursue what it wants it, it's it's if, if it feels like it's able to do its duty constantly it'll never pursue its own wants yeah and why why would it yeah i mean we we're consistently telling si heroes on a regular basis you know to take more risks i mean especially like um you know i from a com from a compatibility standpoint so i'm married to an si hero and my si hero wife has an si hero mother and i have an si hero mother and it's so interesting just to see from a compatibility standpoint where she's just constantly forcing them to have to make a decision constantly and it always puts them in the position where they have to take some risk and they have to be okay with accepting whatever consequences may come from taking that risk and it's interesting to see that one titan from a compatibility standpoint it's not even you know the battleground of titans but it's it's managing the other titans that it should be managing to get it to that thing because it's as if it's burning away the hubris you know right and and yeah so so you'll have that direct um compatibility right with that se hero but what's really interesting is when that se hero can't get through to si hero and so they start hitting that any inferior with their SE. Look around you. Who who who's actually sticking around you? Who's actually desiring you? Right? You're and so that there's an example when that hero function can't get through um through compatibility, you end up having a battleground ensue. And you end up having for with the gateways because 
Titans are directly linked to inhibition. Again, they'll hit that inhibition. Um, it, it, and they'll, depending on whether it's hero to what if it's hero to hero, they prefer not to. In my experience, they prefer not to hit that inferior. They try to challenge the hero first, um, yes. which is kind of interesting. And then, and then they'll go for that inferior if they have to. Well. My, um, my ESTP mentor, Robert Bryant, um, was always telling – he always said that it was people's natural inclination to go for the hero first because people just think naturally, especially like SE, um, SE heroes like himself, even though he himself would never claim to be an SE hero, but he is one uh, – he always says, like, you just go for the throw, and people naturally go for the throw because nat people naturally overall seek the fair fight instead of the dirty fight because they want to walk away yeah. feeling good with their F functions. I feel good about myself because I had a fair fight, or that person, or, you know, or this is ethical, or this is moral, or some capacity. But he's like, if you can go for the throat and win, that's how you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you you got him fair and square. You didn't have to take a cheap shot. And he's like, going for the inferior is like going for the cheap shot every single time. And if you're and yeah, you're gonna win. You know you're gonna win on the inferior. But that doesn't mean the person's gonna change. And then going after hero, right. the person's not gonna change. So he's like, honestly, you just have to target the critic because that's really the only way to teach them something at the end of the day. But that still comes up with great risk. But he says always go after the hero first one it keeps it fair yeah. and two if you win you win for real you know you win you get the guaranteed outcome because he's outcome focused not that he believes that but whatever <laughs> so where does that where does that right. fit into that model so so with with the critic i think that is a quick and easy way because you're hitting the super ego's child Right, that is a great way to essentially get the hero. That that's a great way for the demon function to basically go, oh, hey, Mister Hero, you're letting the children get hurt. Why are you letting my child get hurt? You're protecting yours all the time. You're fine flying around the city, but you're gonna let mine get hurt. Um, in kind of a more abstract way of characterizing it, I suppose. It, well, um, our heads, but, our heads are a family after all. Not that people want to admit right. to that. <laughs> Right, exactly. So it, it definitely, it definitely will. Uh, I, I agree with his word of caution, though, because you will get that is a very quick way to get the super ego out. Um, I mean, very quick because you basically pulled the rug out from the hero, and now the demon is not only pissed because the hero let it happen, but now on top of it, the super ego child just got hit. So super ego's out. Um, and that is consistently, I mean, out of the times I've seen people go to their super ego, it's almost, in my experience, more often the critic getting hit than even the inferior. Um, Wait, I what? mean, because the inferior, I, I, I've seen more often, personally, from people having a super ego reaction from getting their critic hit than from getting their inferior hit. The, the inferior getting hit, it's usually a super ego swing through orbit when it's a when it well projection with us i inferior here so disclaimer. yeah i but it's usually i'm not saying i disagree i just i'm having to go back through all of my anecdotal experience in my life and think about well is that true is that true for me did that happen to me is it really true that i react with my critic more and honestly I think when I was younger, I reacted more with my inferior, but now as an adult, I think I react with my critic consistently. But then again, maybe that has to do with cognitive focus. I never thought of that concept before. Maybe focus has something to do with it. So, if I'm shadow focused, I more do with the critic. I don't know. Potentially, because I mean, I'm shadow focused too, so I know that I've reacted more immediately. Like as far as an immediate reaction, it's usually when Epi gets hit. Um, but I'm also shadow focused, so. Um, it, it, that's kind of an interesting, I, I hadn't really put the focus, uh, to thought, so have to think about that myself, but I do know that like just over time, um, God, especially back with the discord moderation days, back, oh God. back then, when hey, we had those days are coming back, just so you know, I heard 
I heard. Um, Members, but only. yeah, no, I mean, I mean, it's 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 really interesting. I, I, I do have to wonder that subconscious focus types might be more reactive with the inferior, and shadow might be more reactive with the critic. Um, I remember that, certain ENFJs definitely reacted more. It, with, with I mean, TI. it's logical though because usually. When the ego is protecting itself, what function ends up leading the way? It's not the hero. It's actually the parent. The parent just takes its hammer, just starts slamming people in the face. And I like to think the other yeah. sides of the mind, when it's going to battle, they, they, they're, they're pulling out their parent function. So that would be the critic, right? Or in the superego, that would be the yeah. trickster. And the subconscious, obviously, would be the child when that happens. And that's that's kind of how I've oh, always yeah, seen those yeah, reactions. Yeah, yeah. They, they hammer with that SE yeah. when their TI gets hit, especially especially they the go top. super cruel, <laughs> man. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> this, is this is a complete tangent, but why is it that like almost every ENFJ I know is sub focused? Like I'm, oh, I mean, now now that I'm thinking of TI inferior, it's just like almost every single one I've encountered has been sub focused. Well, I do know a shadow focused ENFJ, and that's my father in law. And he's that way because he had an INTJ mother who was insanely cruel to him. Like, he'd go care for animals, and then uh, his mother would, like, kill the animal in front of him. Like, that's how that's right. how rough he had it. She's, she's, she's no longer with us, but. He, he's had an extremely cruel upbringing, and honestly, that kind of cruelty has actually come out you know, nowadays when dealing with his own children, and they've had to deal with that. I've had to even deal with this cruelty. I literally wrote him an 11.5-page paper in the middle of the night explaining to him how much of a dick he is and why, <laughs> because I just couldn't deal with his crap anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? And oh, that vice. That he, vice. Yeah. He, but I reacted with... But I did react with the critic in that situation but it wasn't directed at me it was directed at my wife but i also knew there was no way he'd be able to handle my isfj subconscious either he wouldn't even listen to isfj subconscious because one thing i noticed about fjs is that they refuse to listen to other fjs unless they're all bandwagoning together towards the what they believe is the common good but if there's no bandwagon, they will sell each other out and sell each other down river instantly. And you right, know, they have to have the same shared bond with that FE hero. Um, shared bond. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. What? Actually, I you know I was just thinking about the you know FE or the ENFJs being sub focused. I, I find it kind of interesting how um, with a lot of the social dynamics going on nowadays. Um, it kind of is an epi hero climate, so I almost wonder if that's the if it's a if it's not. Um, I don't believe it's a coincidence that a lot of ENFJs are just kind of thriving on the way that the political landscape is shifting um, with a lot of the feminine feminism movements. And well, does that also include those, segregation? Um, I mean, I'm not trying to like go total woo woo right now, but I maintain segregation is in our immediate future. All these vaccine passports. We now have uh, de Blasio in New York talking about how restaurants, indoor dining, and gyms, whatnot, unless you can prove uh, vaccination status, you can't. You can't. You you have no rights, basically, which is literally creating a second-class citizenry and ultimately uh, new forms of segregation that we've never seen before. And then. Uh, well, if, Epi, Epi, uh, go ahead. I was, I was going to say because I, I get so tr my Epi critic gets so triggered by Epi heroes a lot of times. Um, the problem that a lot of um, EFJs don't understand with their Epi hero is that becoming an extreme does not eliminate the other extreme, and you can only get so inclusionary be before it starts becoming exclusive exclusionary by default. Oh yes, yes, yes. Okay. I need to write this down. This is great. You can only become 
uh, inclusionary to a point, <laughs> inclusive to a point without it becoming disclusive. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that is fantastic. Oh, I love your Effie critic sometimes. <laughs> Yeah. That Effie is heroes fantastic. Heroes literally are the trope of the, it, Effie heroes are the trope, literally the trope of becoming the thing you seek to destroy. Yes, that's true. Every single time, and the the Ti inferior is so binary about fairness. It's ironic that they're so binary about it that they don't see that they're becoming the oppressors just on the other side. Yep. And yeah, so uh, and rant. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I need I, the, to, the I need to call you after, and, and get I some love. advice from you after the stream because I actually have an interesting confrontation with my conflict type coming up this Saturday and it's going to be yep. a huge battle. So I'm gonna need to get some pointers from uh, you on yeah. how to deal with that. Come on, Mr. Effie Critic, you know, hook a brother up. You know what I'm saying? Because dang, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I have I have far more experience with ENFJs than ESFJs. Interestingly, um, I just always seem to find myself in ENFJ circles, whether I want to be or not. Um, I I will say, I mean, as much as I'm shitting on the ENFJs, the ones that can overcome that like that actually get the humility in their in their hero um to be able to listen um i mean they, they're amazing people fantastic brilliant um but it just they've they've just got to let go of that epi hero i mean we all have that problem well, to an extent with our hero function but it just well, happens speaking, to be my critic speaking so. of epi hero like what's gonna happen say if this is a big if maybe it's not a big if i don't know but it's an if if, say, the COVID vaccines end up becoming dangerous to the point where potentially people are dying, there's some reports of it now, but what if it becomes a big thing? How easy would it be for the powers that be to twist it and actually blame the unvaccinated people for those deaths when it's actually the vaccinated alone? You're basically allowing a new form of heretic in society. You already have pre-established segregation and that form of affiliative corruption. What's then going to happen to all the pragmatic types out there like myself, or at least the affiliative types who subscribe to a higher affiliative? You know, right. I mean, I'm, I'm triple affiliative and I have my own feelings on that whole thing. I, they're pretty much shared with you about the in regards to the vaccine. Gosh, it's um, so weird, too, because right. I just had an ENFP this morning tell me about how much of an idiot I am for not, you know, subscribing to that entire narrative. Oh, God. <laughs> I, mean, I have more faith in humanity of because God. of you. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, there, there's just... It's, it doesn't consistently make sense to if you compare it to everything else we've got going on in the world. Yet this is the biggest state of emergency, um, and it's the pestilence yeah, horseman, it, man. It, it and the food shortage is happening right now is the famine horseman. And you know we're gonna have the war horseman around the corner. You know what I'm saying, man? It's it's like it's just the one two punch. And you know it's like it just gets. I mean, you know, I as much as I like to think about psychology and all of these great things, honestly, what really keeps me up at night to the point of depression is societal segregation and the complete abandonment of all these values and as you pointed out the fe heroes are becoming the thing they seek out to destroy where are the te heroes where's that battleground of titans man where's the te heroes no, they, you know to challenge that where are they no, that that that's exactly the problem right so you it is not just the te heroes but the the whole movement of facts don't care about your feelings it's TE versus FE. That's that's literally on a macro scale. What you're seeing is literally TE versus FE. Um, it's <laughs> because 
essentially what you're having is somebody going, look, the data doesn't support your, your bonds there. You know, like it's all great that y'all collectively feel this way about that, but it, it, the, the data is not backing up what you're saying. Right. So that's, that's why you got like Ben Shapiro and T critics, T critics will use that a lot in the same way that like FE critic will turn common FE things on its head. Um, right. So yeah, I, the, the problem is they've all been demonized, right? Like all of, so because with the TE hero, you have an FI inferior. They're already insecure if they're being a good person or not. And if you have all the FE heroes out there going, you're a bad person, if you don't support our movement, our feelings, oh, our values, yes. on this, you're a bad person. So, I mean, it's, so in the, in the article, <laughs> Um, why can't the, the TE heroes just be like, about, you're not a smart person? Why does any should anyone listen to you? Like, where, why isn't that happening? Come on, Battleground of Titans, produce. <laughs> because the TE demon is shutting out their voice. Yeah. Right. The FI user doesn't feel like their their opinions valid at all. And if they're going to sit there and have to worry that they're a if they're being a good person or not. And if they feel like their voice isn't going to be heard anyway, then, you know, from the T here, well, I'm not going to talk to those idiots. They still did stupid zone them, absolutely, but they're just not going to share their opinion on it. Um, I mean, the the any critics, the, um, the the ENTJs are a lot more open about it. They, they're a lot more willing to challenge it, especially since they're pragmatic and their, their freedom's getting encro encroached upon. But the... ESTJs really have a hard time with it. They really have a hard time with it, especially since the one of the biggest proprietors of those kind of movements end up being ENFJs and INFPs. Um, uh, so, agreed. So, he, so this the whole crap that Bezos had to deal with recently that made him the poorest, um, or or not no longer the richest man in the world because he had to give half of his fortune to his you know, wife who's being hypergamous, basically. And uh, no. as a result of that, he lost out and he had to suffer. And do you feel that he, or do you, do you think he believes that he's a good person after all of that? After he got literally screwed and he's no longer to be think, that voice? I don't think he did it. Yeah, I don't think he did it. Um, in that instance, I don't think he did it because he was worried about being a good person. I just think that his T hero um, reputation got absolutely destroyed. So you ended up with a broken hero almost in the situation. And he kind of, I mean, he, I doubt he's going to show that on the outside, but I mean, it's hard to imagine with everything going on that that hero didn't get wrecked, so to speak. So, yeah, well, I mean, I mean you're you're right but like even but if we're talking about broken heroes even i predicted in 2019 that we're going to have vaccine passports and no one believed me and told me i was a bloody conspiracy theorist and yet you have mayor de blasio of new york city saying that they're an absolute must have and then you have people out there talking about how hipaa was supposed to be protecting people from their right to privacy when it comes to you know vaccine status which it doesn't it only actually has to do with medical personnel but a business can legally still ask you and you can decide not to say but if you don't say you're denied services it's almost like you know if you don't take the mark then you can't buy or sell it's i i find it's almost no different you know from that yeah. same concept it's literally the same trope you know it may not be the same thing metaphysically right. but it is the same trope Regardless, in as much as the food shortages mm -hmm. that we're seeing right now is leading to the same trope of the famine uh, horsemen of the apocalypse, but we don't need to talk about that. The reality of the situation is, is that I'm just concerned that people macroly are not using the battlegrounds appropriately. I don't think there's enough challenge or people are not willing to challenge each other. I find that the challenge exists between men and women, but I don't see enough challenge between men on men, and I see even less challenge between women on women. How does gender affect the battlegrounds, you think? Because that's what I've observed. I've also experienced that. What's your opinion on that? So, so one, one thing I've noticed, because I haven't put 
a ton of thought into gender on it, um, particularly. Um, but one thing that I find interesting, and this is going to affect the battlegrounds, is that women are pushed more towards their value judgments, regardless of type. Men are pushed more towards their thinking judgments, regardless of type. Um, so if you have a battleground, it particularly, um, like INPs, for example, like how many INP women do you know that act overly bubbly with Effie Inferior to the point that they almost seem like I, they're starter types, like they're, they're trying ISTPs so hard. ISTPs or INTPs. So... Uh, I've noticed it more frequently with INTPs, but ISTP women do suffer from it as well, in my experience. Well, we could stay with um, IST, uh, INTPs. INTPs. We could stay on that topic. In fact, just... Um, okay, so I have a new hobby. Um, I did it because I have a, a strategy that I'm utilizing for my own self to be able to, uh, you know, make a lot of friends. Because, you know, I, I move a lot. I move once or twice a year it's just kind of insane with me that's why i try to own as little as possible and people have seen me move a lot while you know on the show they see my background changes constantly and no one really ever knows where i am you know and that's just something about me right well i've been playing a lot of magic the gathering recently in an effort to basically create a network of people that i know and you know being an nt type i like to have relationships with nerds a lot i i love right. having relationships with nerds um now in doing that though like there is this one intp girl who obviously has a crush on me and like how she'll initiate with me or try to get my attention or at least try to see if i will like desire to have a conversation with her like the last thing that she did she literally threw a peanut m m on the floor so that it would make contact with my foot and it would hit my foot and I'd be like, what? what? You know? And then like... It's just a background way of doing it, too. <laughs> yeah, but she, but she did this in such a way to like, you know... So I would say because that action was insanely overt, even though it's an SE trickster making that action, because it looks all nice and innocent, whatever, because it's the child of the shadow. But, you know, using that right. innocent SE trickster mode, it's subtle... And it's hard for people to label that as bubbly, but it's such an overt action. And she consistently did actions like that over and over and over every time I was in that card shop because she was an employee at said card shop that like, yeah. I'm just like, well, dang, you know, which is weird because like she knows she knows I'm married. She knows, um, mm -hmm. you know, see, that's the thing. Like, women don't really care if you're married. I think it's because biologically they're, they're not supposed to. But, but the point is, is that, like, they really don't care if you're married. And it got to the point where she was actually enlisting some of her employees, basically, to tell me through, you know, tell me so that she could tell me through them, you know, what her work schedule is, when she'd be there. And every time I show up, she's always trying to strike up conversations with me, trying to keep my attention. And if there are other women in the room, she will literally move herself to be in between me and them. So that if I was to gaze in their direction, I could only look at her, you know, like subtle stuff like that. I get that that doesn't look like yeah. bubbly behavior, but it kind of comes off as bubbly behavior, you know, as as best as an INTP could right. could pull that off. I I mean, how... no, no, absolutely, and that, no, that's kind of what I'm getting at is like when when for as far as gender dynamics go, like I I see this consistently where they they're so pressured by society, whether it's they're consciously aware of it or not. Um, that they end up favoring those um, those value functions, the FE, FI, right. over their thinking functions, even if that's their primary thing. Like, the, the amount of FE inferiors I see that try to emulate having FI, just like, especially for women, just because that's what society expects, it, it's, it's crazy. Um, and the same can be said for guys. Like, I mean, 
um, as far as being like an FI, uh, Delta Quadra, FISI, um, although it's debatable whether FISI, um, which one's more feminine. Um, but like you still like NPs, NP men end up having to favor their thinking functions a lot more than their feeling functions. Um, just societally speaking, AIDS, it's a bit obnoxious as an FI, FI user male because, you know, it's like, okay, so, but that's, that's its own thing. Now, well, granted, luckily your, your T function is pool, optimistic. Luckily, luckily you have that, you know, luckily it's optimistic. Right. Thank God. Right. At least you're not in high enough for you would right. have it way worse. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and especially with that SI child and their comfort zones. Um, the INPs, man, uh, it's, that's, I can only imagine. Um, because at least for the SI inferiors, you know, we have those bursts of SE that kind of shoo away the kind of uh, perceptions as far as that goes. But, that, I mean, the SE trickster really makes it even harder for them. But, um, I mean... It definitely, the gender definitely affects the battlegrounds because when you have two functions that are competing with each other, having favor from one, external pressure for favoring one is going to sway that outcome one way or the other. Um, so that's kind of my two cents as far as that goes. It's a very surface level, admittedly. Um, but that's, that's kind of the patterns I've noticed. Now, I think... And I'm not fully, I haven't fully fleshed this out, but I think there are ways um, for, like, the less masculine men to overcome that. Obviously, there's the books, um, and then there's books on both sides that kind of talk about this. But I, I always am more of a fan of middle ground than extremes, but semantics at the end of well, the day. Uh, uh, well, while, while I agree with that, the problem is, is that the middle ground exists because of socialization and conditioning, in my opinion. I think I think extremes would actually be healthy for us to go to now, at least from a millennial generation point of view, being the new hero generation. I think they need to embrace extremes and then just let Generation Z, the parent function generation, basically uh, you know, determine what the middle ground should be after we get the extremes, because the extremes is better than uh, going after the status quo from a social standpoint. I think the status quo that the boomers have created um, is something that needs to be absolutely shattered and destroyed with utter contempt, extreme contempt. And I, I don't really right. know, I don't know how really else better to do it other than going to those extremes. I think extremes extreme, are extreme. important. I, I I agree that they're important. I think that it, it goes back to the ENFJ problem, right? Where it, if extremes are used with the understanding that they are a temporary extreme and not to be the new standard, then that's an appropriate approach. But the FE heroes tend to end up just trying to push for that being the new standard. And that's, I think, where we end up on this pendulum between yeah. the two extremes. Um, yeah. And, and do, going to extreme has its place. Um, it, it's, I would argue that it is expedient. And sometimes that is appropriate, um, depending on the direction we're heading. If we're heading towards a cliff, expedient is necessary, of course. Um, but if... Do you think I'm enabling? Do you think I'm enabling the FE heroes? I mean, based on what you're saying, it sounds like it. And I'm a, I'd be okay with that criticism. I, I'm perfectly fine with that because I haven't thought of that before. But it seems like if I'm going out there, like, again, Battleground of Titans, TE heroes versus FE heroes. If I'm going out there and I'm using my TE critic effectively against the te heroes and smashing them in the face making their fi inferiors worse it seems like i'm making the fa hero problem worse and not assisting with that battleground you know what i'm saying i feel partly responsible for that right. now you know i i would say i would say there is a bit to that i don't i i think you it's not necessarily that you're enabling because well i guess i mean if you look at the big picture yes because what you, you're you're being the counterbalance and right. that's just what they're doing 
really at the end of the day. So you're not, it's not a direct support, but you're basically doing what they are doing. So I wouldn't necessarily call it enablement. You're not on their side about things, but you're making the same mistake. I would say that they are, it is the problem. Um, now, again, I, I think that extremes are necessary if we're kind of veering towards a cliff. If there is imminent danger, you know, um, in, in the foreseeable future, then yeah, take the expedient route. I think segregation, necessary. segregation of people that should not be segregated against. I mean, yeah. like the vaccine thing, for example, the yeah. only law out there that can defend a bet against it is ADA. The American Disability Act. That's right. the only thing that can stand against it. But that's only if you have a disability. So if you're disabled, mm -hmm. you can stand against that just fine and be protected by the law. But there is absolutely zero protection. You know, and in the Constitution, while it talks about no unwanted search and seizures, it doesn't have, uh, you know, protections in there for, you know, medical privacy, for example. So that it's really just on a state by state basis. But most states will actually allow various locales and why they have separation between church and state. There's this so-called separation between business and state. But ultimately, businesses are so afraid of being sued that businesses will go along with the state the entire time. So if you look at it from a triple constraint standpoint, we're going to lose. Cheap, fast, or right. Pick two. You right. know, so... so... No, absolutely. So what I would say is that you're kind of in a unique position as far as the epi heroes are concerned with your TE critic. Because you do have the ability now. There's, there's always going to be issues with TE heroes and FE heroes on both sides of the fence. But when we start swinging too far in one direction, it is not balanced anymore. You know, it's it's really easy for that to snowball. Um, one of the most interesting things here, um, if we're talking about the battlegrounds between people. When you have societal movements, whether that's from a TE standpoint or an FE standpoint, because you can have it from a TE standpoint, you have um, you have like Ben Shapiro out there um, <laughs> going ham with his TE parent. Um, but when you have too much in one or the other, you need to end up balancing out. But what I was getting at is that when you have these movements, you it can imitate. What it most frequently imitates on a macro scale is the battleground of Titans. It, it is a macro level battleground of Titans, and that's why it ends up having, when you have these FE heroes and the FE overpowers, it becomes almost like that battleground of Titans where it ends up Agreed. pushing down the other TE, pushing down the TE, Agreed. Yeah, TE heroes. And what I've. What, what I suspect, there's there's two unique function slots that are good at counterbalancing this. One of them, uh, well, three, but once it gets to too much of a degree, hilariously enough, the, tier, the hero just becomes unable to overcome literally the masses of the hero function. But the aspirational and the critic. A, so a... Um, TE aspirational is extremely good at overcoming FE, um, you know, kind of society. It is kind of so fascinating. Like a, so like um, an FI hero. Mm -hmm. So you're so, telling me the ISFPs but, yeah. need to show up with their big ass hammers and just start hammering shit. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> and the INFPs need to be... Yeah, the INFPs need to be aspiring. It's really difficult for the INFPs to... Essentially what you want is the ISFPs going against kind of the um, the ENFJ approach, and you want the INFPs going against the ESFJ approach because then you don't have that that uh, influence of camaraderie or of compatibility going on. Right. Um, so the... INFPs need to be aspiring and smashing, <laughs> ironically smashing those established um, norms. So the FESI with that SI parent, um, whereas the ISFPs need to just absolutely smash the like daydreaming of the ENFJs. Um, 
so there because there's two parts to that um and then of course the critic functions are really adept at dealing with the hero functions um not only on their like own so like fe critic against fe heroes but you also fe critic versus te heroes can be applied as well and the same goes for your te critic so you can be sitting there and bashing your te versus the te hero and saying, what are you doing why are you like what are you doing dummy like use your ti nemesis but you can also use that te because it is so critical with the data that it collects to absolutely give that ti inferior no ability to counteract right like you just present the data to the point that it can't really overcome that the hero function that has to shift out of its spot because that ti is basically being hit and it sucks because for the t critics what this means um so what you're saying is a call to unacceptance fe is trying to constantly gain acceptance and we need the fi heroes if society to stand up and be like we don't accept this f you is that is that basically what you're saying Uh, that yeah that and the like yes essentially um with Actually, the more I think about it, yeah, you hit it spot on. So, I mean, that's that's the way the compatibility is supposed to work in the first place. Like, SE follows the routines of the SI around it. FE is supposed to follow, supposed to follow the FI of that around it. We don't have a lot of great FI out there right now. It's part of the problem. Um, and so on and so forth. The TE is supposed to follow consistent TI. It's so on and so forth. It, the introverted functions are the ones that are supposed to be setting the standards. So if you have the hero function running rampant, you basically want not the compatible hero because that's at the same level. You need that inferior overpowering it. So there's two ways you could go about this. You could even have the FI inferiors, but it's a lot harder for them. But the TE inferiors rising up against the FE that aspirational TE, if used properly, can counterbalance that. But FE. they're divided. That's, that's the momentum. That's the problem. Like the, the TE inferiors, one's pragmatic, one's affiliative, and both FE heroes are affiliative. I think right there, right. that's the problem. That's the problem. Yeah. If the FE heroes were divided, right, then we'd have a chance. But they're not. They're partial. They're automatically by default biased because of that affiliative worldview and how do you how do you get the fi heroes to unite when they already are at odds with their worldview i mean luckily we have ti heroes who are at least pragmatic all the way across the board but the thing is though for some reason while they're both pragmatic they're so pragmatic they just don't care about one another to the point where they just be like, okay, right. yeah, the whole world could just burn. I don't care. Well, as, long as, as long as I'm getting mine. As long as I'm getting mine, I'm yeah, good. Yeah. You know. The, Even INTPs do I that too to with their ISF, hedonistic tendencies. You know. The ISFPs basically need to see that, you know, <laughs> that their freedoms are being impacted, whether they realize it or not. Their freedoms are being impacted. But they're the and ones that want to put their heads how, in the sand because if it doesn't if it doesn't benefit them immediately right in front of them to say something, they're not going to do it. They're not willing to put their reputation on the line, especially ISFP men who have been socialized and conditioned to not be men, to put tribe above self, to not have any aspect right. of masculine behavior whatsoever, and they're constantly demonized and derided by society whenever they exhibit the masculine whatsoever. That's the reason why the power is that B are able to get away with this new form of segregation that's happening literally right now and it's because we i mean like like honestly if you want to do damage to this society all you have to do is show up to school boards and just criticize people in the school board and people run unopposed in school board seatings go take over a school board it's not that hard that's the most 
weakest place in society of the in society's affiliative folks if you want to do damage to society if you want to take society back you go take over the school board not anywhere else the school board is number one target because the school board is where the most damage to society is also dealt but it's also the place that it's yep. so easy to replace those people it's the easiest it's their weakest location but they also wield the most power like and it's just that's a, that's a macro battleground te versus fe right there the school board itself yep. like what the hell right. dude god right well and, and as you were kind of alluding to before i mean there's all of these the, the heroes will naturally create macro battlegrounds and like the the more that they those the, the more that's unified with those the stronger it gets like any heroes, for example, I mean, there's, you already touched upon it a little bit before, but like the, the SE completely concrete, what's reality? Oh, what you're saying is not real. Um, and it just gets dismissed, right? So Would any that be the same default, for FI Childs just, trying to, because Shadden in the chat asked about, well, could we use an FI Child instead of an FI Hero because FI at Child is optimistic as well to provide that challenge? Or is that still not good enough when it comes to the grand FE Hero narrative? If the FI child was, and listen to the NFP talk about narrative here, but if the FI child was placed onto the right podium, right, it's, it, the hero function will always, always have a special spot camaraderie or compatibility wise for that child. So that is that is an avenue of approach. But so you're saying provided that they're given no inhibition or obstacle to their voice, basically. Which... <sighs> Shouldn't because that's battleground of innocence. Ultimately, shouldn't the universe grant them the path to the to the podium by default? Like we talk about the child able to make it through the minefield miraculously. Shouldn't no, that with, happen? With, it can. The problem a lot of times for for FI child is TE parent gets absolutely crapped on by the epi heroes because like so many so many tropes in media will paint te parents in this just like absolutely like stuck up way um oh like paris to Hilton. the point where <laughs> oh yeah or, i mean or, the, or ben shapiro I the trope of um actually um, actually, the trope of um actually is, the, the, the is, Karen is trope. trope of the parent. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, I'm talking like the nerdy, like, um, well, actually. <laughs> so I'm talking kind of the nerdosphere here <laughs> and like that. They get such a bad rap for it because they're just trying to help educate. They're trying to make sure that people's thinking is consistent. But that, God, that pisses off TI inferior so bad so bad um but uh T. I. yeah is my i mean they end up a bad off, rap the... it's my favorite function yeah i mean tropes are tropes are so powerful in society. i got it got it got to crush the ti really inferior I, I i always take a hammer to it always step on it whenever i can because i like to remind them that uh they allow social norms to shape their own thinking even though they believe they're the ones shaping okay. social norms no they're not they're adopting them and enforcing them. They're not making them. And they just have to accept that TPs like me are the ones who actually make them, not them. And they just can't. They can't because of that Effie Hero hubris. Oh, God. <laughs> yep. Inclusion to exclusion. Inclusion to but, exclusion. But, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, FI Child just ends up getting a really bad rap because they end up coming across with their T parent as, like, stuck up with information so like people don't it's, it's a macro level of fi child abuse and it's no wonder we end up with so many fi child with a god complex like if if you're literally just innocently innocent with your opinion with your fi with your values um and society is basically consistently ignoring your input right consistently abusing your child yeah, of course they're gonna end up with dog complexes. Like, it, it's it's not a surprise in the slightest. Now that doesn't justify, of course, um, but you know it's not a surprise. 
Um, so, so, so yeah, you're FI me is that in order to save society, I need to go out of my way to empower FI users as much as possible to stand up to the FE affiliative bullshit. You still need to criticize FI users when they're being absolutely like self-absorbed because like it needs to be the FI user still has to have good morals at the end of the day. Like, because if we get the wrong FI user up there, that's, you know, like the really bad NFPs, for example, they end up just absolutely manipulating the FI heroes like completely. And then it's just, like I said, the two biggest pushers are the INFPs and the ENFJs like right now with, with the way that society is going Um no, INFPs are in the background, but still, like that FI hero, that FE hero is absorbing that. So, and the the INFPs end up always flocking to ENFJs, um, just because of that FE child. Like that that ends up really bad. So. I don't know. The I audience mean, is I asking about TE child, like Battleground of Innocence. What can the Battleground of Innocence do in this situation with the TE child versus FE approach? I mean, TE child, the, the advantage that TE child has, I mean, what TE child should be doing, things like what Gary Vaynerchuk is doing, where he's trying to educate people and help them out. He's got that NE and TE going to actually try to give people value. Um, so TE Child is just sharing information. Like it's basically taking all these things that are made overly complex because there's a lot of that out in the media where things are made obscured intentionally and repackaging them just in a very simple, easy to understand way. But the, the FI parent still has to have the moral integrity to not use that to better itself. Because that's going to taint everything that that TE child is doing. So, yes, they, wow. I mean the child functions are always a path to changing the future because of their innocence. They they are always a path, but a lot of child functions. I mean, it, it's hard to have a really good child function in society when there is the issues of fatherlessness when people yeah. are going through all these shitty situations growing up so they're not ending up getting a good solid childhood right so that's that's part of the problem so so with that being said then it sounds like from a battleground standpoint like we need to end up creating so there's a collective ego for society right now, and it's an FE hero. We need to create the collective super ego to provide that challenge yeah. in some capacity. What steps right. do we need to take to actually make that happen, to have a better tomorrow, a Trump better future? Did an amazing job. Just Trump, Trump getting elected did a huge step in that direction. Like <laughs> the fact that we had that EMT have it in the ENTJ as our president that stirred up just so much controversy just for his existence creating conflict for the sake of challenge and which would only like burning the literally burning down the forest so that new life could grow that kind of approach I imagine right. I'm not a fan I'm not to, to I'm not a fan of Trump but I am a fan of the chaos and the problems that he created and the conflicts he created definitely I, I I think Absolutely. I think I, mean, I think at the end it ended up becoming more healthy. Whereas you have people like Biden now, who is like the great enabler, who is this FI inferior, who is literally controlled by the FE hero narrative, as you put it. And this FE hero narrative has gotten to the point where here I'm just going to give all this money away, and now no one wants to work anymore. Supply chains are broken. We have famine across the earth right now. Food shortages are happening. I don't know if you guys understand this, but you go to Costco and they have a limit for how many bags of rice you can buy. Think about that, folks. Yeah. That's never happened before in my entire life. Okay. And, you know, uh, the rice point. Rice has always been the go to. <laughs> yeah, it's always been the go to. Like, it's so. 
like I'm not here to tell people they did a bad job for voting for Biden. I just don't think the average American is intelligent enough to actually know the consequences of what the system actually is. Because you could have someone like me argue that, you know, if you voted at all, that's proof of how ignorant you are. But then you have other people on the other side of the coin who say that if you don't vote, then you're part of the problem. I'm not saying either one is more correct than the other. What I am saying is, is that... There is an intrinsic root cause problem that no one has taken the time to analyze from a macro level and try to attempt to fix, okay? Because there is an answer there. And I think the answer is a lot simpler than people realize, especially when you have people walking up to the steps of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. and literally committing suicide in front of everybody else to make their point. You know, I, and yet the grand affiliative, the, the FE culture is just causing a lot of problems. And I mean, it's not enough for my TE credit to just be like, okay, well, everyone's being stupid right now. It's not good enough. That's the problem I have with TE credit because TE credit is often willing to throw, you know, you look at cause and effect, right? Cause and effect. Effect can be either immediate reactions or long-term consequences. Effect can be SE reactions or long-term NE consequences. And I, yeah, the domino effect. The problem is I'm so concentrated on the dominoes that I'm not seeing the immediate effects because my X-rated sensing is so low. And I think because yeah. I'm so focused on the why and basically ignoring the how in many cases, that we're not actually a I'm not actually able to see, you know, all of the competing interests that are at play when it comes to, for example, a geopolitical situation or even a macro political situation in the United States or Western society, Western society or whatever. But I agree with you. The battlegrounds are being played out from a macro standpoint as much as they're also being pre- played out on a micro standpoint. And I know we've spent a lot of time on the macro within this discussion, but let's let's pivot towards more of the micro. What would you say yeah. would be the value of the battlegrounds in a parenting situation? How can a battleground of titans or a battleground of responsibility, innocence, or uh, inhibition be really beneficial to a parent and a child relationship? And I'm not just talking like a parent parenting a child in their childhood. I'm also talking about a child parenting their parents in their old age because they're out of touch too. I'm mm-hmm. talking about both sides of the spectrum. You know, like what? Interesting. Yeah, like this is this is one of the biggest questions I've wanted to ask you because I see consistently like how like for example um my wife right now is actually having a fight with her mother right now and it's about it's over a cat it's over our cat our old cat and the the cat is got into some serious health trouble it's be it's exorbitantly expensive to pay for the cat it's it's become a really really bad situation and some decisions are having to be made about the cat and who's taking care of the cat who's going to pay for all this those kinds of things. And I'm literally watching my wife parent her ISFJ mother through the situation based on today's standards and not her mother's traditional standards, especially since her mother in the past behaved a certain way that is showing or proving to my wife that her mother is showing favoritism uh, towards certain members of the family compared to her, right? And this creates a lot of issues and while they have a pedagogue relationship it's actually in some situations a battleground of titans between her and the other ne hero in so her brother who her stepbrother who is an any hero he's an enfp right? right and their battleground is playing out through all these other people around this battleground and like to the point where you know her diamonds get stolen or he's trying to take her bed or like or take her property or it's just uh, and she calls him out she'll shame him publicly in front of the family he'll whine about not having a complete meal because no one bought him fries you know what i'm saying like so there's 
there's a whole bunch mm -hmm. of different things playing out. You know, so from like a micro standpoint, like are are the battlegrounds person, person. Yeah, are the battlegrounds only there to exist to really just bring challenge from that super ego standpoint? Or do they exist for something more? Is it more about keeping things healthy? Keeping it real. Kinda of like Dave Chappelle, when keeping it real goes wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, no, I mean, the battlegrounds really are, they're essentially trying to create balance. I mean, at the end of balance. the day, like, yes, you put the hero, with the hero, you end up with a lot of hubris on both sides of the coin. Like, but at the end of the day, the battlegrounds are created just from the fact that one function is preferred over the other. Your brain naturally wants to take the path of least resistance to solve a problem. If you're an SE demon and it's an SE problem, your brain's naturally wanting to go to that SE. It's yes. your preference for your hero function that's repressing that. So you're, you're almost putting an obstacle in front of yourself. And the battlegrounds right. essentially exist to <laughs> knock that out so we can basically be more flexible, um, essentially. It's really problematic with the hero functions the when you have battlegrounds of titans it's a little bit easier to navigate the um maturing functions than the transitory functions because the transitory functions the um you know your gateways they're all about force whether that's it's it's basically um potent potency versus impotence with the uh, Battleground of Titans and the Battleground of Inhibition. Right. Um, Battleground of Inhibition basically creates impotence in your super ego or in your. Uh, wait, hero. wait, 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 wait a minute. What? Um, Say that again. Your your inferior your nemesis create impotence in your hero function and your demon function. Oh my god, I never thought of it that way. Could you give an example? For, for some type. Because sometimes this well, I'm about to throw INFJs under the bus with their performance Do anxiety. <laughs> no, literally, the SE inferior they they want to pursue an interaction with somebody, but they end up getting so caught up in how they'll perform that they end up literally impotent, or just the metaphorical impotent where they just sit in their basement. No, no, no. I, I completely agree. They they ain't being hard, that's for sure. They really soft because they're trying so hard to be hard that they end up being soft. I I, I completely agree right. with so, that. For sure. So so for the for the battleground of inhibition, it's all about learning to be potent. And for the hero functions, it's basically accepting that they even have a weakness. Right. It's it's basically <laughs> there are times. So kind of to what we were saying, the TE heroes are being rendered impotent by the FE in society right now. Um, so there's a couple different ways that you might be able to see where I'm going with this, that you could apply this in a parenting situation. So in, really, this isn't it's knowing the time to choose a battleground versus choosing like because the mirror functions are just one of three ways that cognition interacts with each other so it's right. just knowing which one is appropriate for what situation um if if you're needing especially with the hero function if you're needing them to see that they're being overly um arrogant i suppose um there's two ways to go about it. You can choose the battleground method. Um, and that's that's going to, in the long term, that will garner more respect, right? And allow them to be able to accept their own weakness, which will do more for the hero in the long run. Or you go for the inferior and show the hero that it's impotent and not effective which usually leads them to sticking their head in the sand, but it's a good short-term solution if it's necessary. Um, but there's also from, I mean, that's kind of this 
I mean, that's kind of the uh, more pessimistic approach to it. But the optimist approach would be to empower their inferior functions is, is, is another way you can go about it. If you need the hero to step down, you can empower the, um, their battleground of any mission. Um, there's a few different ways you could go about that, but I, I would, as far as empowerment goes, maybe not go with the battleground for that one, um, insofar as an external person to person. Um, now understanding somebody's inferior and nemesis and how those play off of each other, um, can do a great deal in helping you to actually ease the anxiety that might be causing them to dig their heels into their hero in the first place. So, um, like so you can take the approach pathologies, basically their psycho psychological neutral pathologies and see if you can actually address the source of their pain to begin with, which is causing that insecurity right. really to come out. Right. So if you can if you can address the insecurity, a lot of times the hero doesn't have a reason to fight. Like it, it, it will let go. So but yeah. So it. then it be, basically the hero um, becomes uh, is the right term benevolent. I think it might be benevolent. The hero accepts its weakness, basically, oh, okay. um, which allows aspiration. Um, so. Yeah, I mean that's that's kind of to benevolence a good word. That's a more benevolent approach to um, utilizing the battlegrounds, but that's not always the right answer. It's I wish there was like a one size fits all solution, but there's not. You really, if you truly are trying to help somebody, understanding what they're going through and understanding their functions is going to be the best bet. I mean, at the end of the day, like seeing where they're struggling and addressing that one way or the other, because um, the gateways are just the gateways. At the end of the day, they're either going to be impotent or forceful, and that force can be used for good or bad, regardless. But really, a lot of times there's there's another approach, and that's going for the functions that are maturing, because that's the growth and development of each side but, of the mind like what about the battleground of titans like for example oftentimes in our marriage like my wife and i will have our battleground of titans every day and sometimes all of a sudden we catch ourselves where i'm behaving like an intj or she's behaving like an infj with that se security mm -hmm. or or insecurity, or uh, or that NE insecurity, you know, where I behave like an ISFJ, she's behaving like an INFJ. Like, it happens consistently where the Titans are all of a sudden putting yeah. us in areas of insecurity that we never really ever were. And all of a sudden, boom, we have a new yeah. set of insecurities that we've never had before. Right, because, like, when you apply that much force to an inhibition function which is likely what's ending up happening. The heroes are clashing first and they can't, they can't make any headway. And then they end up hitting the inferior and it just reminds as the collateral hero, damage instantly. or like, intentionally. It could be both. I okay. mean, it, like it, it can be both. Like, I mean, there are situations where you just end up as a demon. We can be very guilty of this of going for the sore spot. Um, and just really hammering that soul spot. So it just, but there's also times where like, we're just not aware how we're coming across. Like, right. SED, and like, um, <laughs> like, I mean, so it just, it depends. Like one of my coworkers that, uh, he, he's a, he's an STP and like, he'll just jokingly, lovingly be like, why are you yelling at me, bro? And I'll just be like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, oh, whoops, my bad. Like, and so... Oh, it, my wife does that to me all the time. That... All the time. Yeah, yeah. So, so there, there are loving ways... She did it to me actually, last night, you could, you could and I deserved it. <laughs> you, you could even flip it on its head, where, like, you wear the insecurity on your sleeve, and not as an excuse, but literally as a, like like with 
with a smile no on your need, face. Like, no need to inform me what I already know. Thank you. <laughs> right. right. Um, but, like, accepting that, the, like, a lot of times if you have a battleground of Titans going on, what I've noticed will diffuse the situation almost instantaneously isn't necessarily, like, an acceptance of defeat. But it's it, it's the hero going. Wait, hold on a second. Like, I'm like for any hero. It's like, well, hey, you know, I realize that I'm like I'm just uncomfortable right now. So that's coming out in some kind of way. And like just that humility for the hero to say, I don't like I'm not I don't know all the consequences. I just realized what was going on now, right? So they, you could almost invert it on its head. Um, so there there's. There's a lot of different approaches you could take depending on what the goal is. Um, so if you want to get macro, it's it, it needs it ends up needing to be macro or micro, excuse me. Um, if, if you want to get micro, it needs to be micro. But I think there is absolutely use in using the battleground from a term from a standpoint of understanding because you understand that. The inhibition, this is where this person is going to struggle the most with these functions, right? Like ENPs, we have such a hard time with consistency. Like one of our one of our biggest problems is consistency. Yeah, Until, we're either too consistent to or under consistent. Working. Which is not consistent, right? Which is not consistent. Maximum <laughs> effort is still not consistent because you're you're gonna burn out. <laughs> Right. So, like, being able to just understand where the hangups are that this person's ego and superego are basically clashing will tell you a lot about why they're making the decisions that they're making. If you have somebody that struggles with inconsistency, like an E and actually all EPs, flat out all EPs. And I inferior or SI inferior all suck with consistency to some varying degree. Um, well, then you know that's kind of their struggle. So you can either take the camaraderie approach and say, hey, you're fucking up. You need to be more consistent. Or you can apply ease, which is at the end of the day, a bit of enablement. But like, what are you trying to treat? Because if if this person's already like just completely locked in their battleground of inhibition, hitting that battleground's not going to be effective. It's not going to help anything necessarily. I mean, for some maybe, but if they're struggling in that area, I mean, hitting it's not going to do much good other than just make it worse. Um, but you know, if they're being way too arrogant with their hero or their demon, then maybe it's appropriate to give that a tap. Right. So it's just another layer. Like we through throughout like your your channel, we've talked about how Axis plays a role in flipping the hero. Um and then we talk about how orbit plays a role in developing maturity and filling out those functions. And this is just another like lens to look at it through and understand that like these functions are also attacking each other outward so yeah it really helps drive like what? the it's it's like the engine that's driving the extroverted behavior it's it's like you have your nature on internally and you have your axis and your orbit and they can be affected ex by external forces too but the battlegrounds more of uh, it's literally the process by which nurture itself is created right. as a result of nature it's the na it's the engine right. itself it is the engine of nurture and that's why you have to you know just like the the famous old adage um how do you fight an idea well ultimately it's with another idea that's that's really the only way right. to do it, and it's the battlegrounds that are able to do that. Um, we're we're about four minutes over time right now, but I wanted to get to Ezra's uh, uh, question. He asks, "Is the best way to defuse the battleground of Titans the Socratic method?" It, it is can in be. My I would marriage. say that's a good. It is in my right. marriage. Right. Um, <laughs> I would. Say... I would say certain types would respond better than others. Um, like, 
I'd be careful using the Socratic method on an EJ. I'd be real careful about that because, like, the Socratic method basically draws out your FITI and is basically causing you to look at that battleground and look at your internal understanding, which is if you put FITI together, it's internal understanding, and it causes you to reassess that. So it could work. It could definitely work on EJs, but just be careful using it because it can also put them in a state of analysis paralysis to a degree. <laughs> so no, that's right, actually. I mean, You're absolutely right. That happens to my father all the time, and he's an EJ, he's an ENFJ, and he's an ISTP-focused one, and he just gets stuck. He gets so stuck that it almost looks as if he's putting his head in the sand. He's not doing that. He just doesn't yeah. even know what to think. He's been so blown away by how he was just right. – he walked into that trap, and he has he has no – he has no clue, no rhyme or reason or – he just have no idea what to even do, you know. So I, I never thought of it that way. I, I, right. would, I would say the Socratic method works best on Battleground of Innocence hmm. if, if we're going to rank it. Battleground of Innocence, Battleground of Responsibility is kind of a crapshoot because, like, then you're just putting the trickster versus the parent, which can produce interesting results. Um, but it's like, I don't know, you, you're kind of throwing a dart at a board at that point on what you get out of that. If you want to, like, agreed, it's, roll like, the dice, it's like asking a little kid, uh, or a teenager to all of a sudden you know stop sex drugs and alcohol even though they've been doing it for many years and you're just like hey you need to stop that and they look at you as if you're from another planet <laughs> i don't think that's gonna be very right. effective <laughs> yeah. i i do think you could use the socratic method on fi as well as ti because like my initial reaction was like well wouldn't that be more ti but no fi fi can you can utilize socratic method on fi because it's just instead of true or false you're just going for right or wrong like, it, it's the same, like, system, but it'd just be, like, you just tweak the type of questions you're asking. Um, but, yeah, I, I would say it's most effective for a productive, um, for pr productivity-wise, for um, Battleground of Innocence with FI and TI. So um, the INJs and what, what would the other one be off the top of my head? So it'd be, FI trial would be... INTJ, Both INTJ, and, okay, yeah, ITJs and then IFJs, I guess it would, yeah, ITJs and IFJs, um, it'd be most effective with. Um, I guess you're right about and that. And then it would be very effective. Highest compatibility, because that's my highest compatibility. It's also my highest professional compatibility, and it's also my highest uh, camaraderie, and and it's my pedagogy. Yeah, and all of those, which are right. which, which I classify those as like the most beneficial types a person can have your pedagogue your compatible your camaraderie and your high professional compatibility which is basically half compatible half camaraderie it's it's the cohort relationship i find those to be the most immediately beneficial may not be the most long-term beneficial types to a person but the most immediately beneficial and and sexually or otherwise um although not i wouldn't right. say Although, because of pessimistic matching with optimistic functions, there is some sexual benefits um, to the other two types, but I don't, I don't recommend that. Um, you know, for like SI heroes, for an any hero, I just don't. Um, and you and I both can speak from personal experience, you know, on that point. But that being said, it's yeah. still there's still some risks there. So yeah, I I I hundred percent agree. Um, so we are eight nine minutes over time now. Um, so we're just gonna wrap this up. Um, thank you for coming, Mr. Chris. It's been fantastic to have you on the show. It's also fantastic to add you as a content creator to the team, and uh, and eventually yeah. in the near future to the coaching staff. Um, you're already participating heavily on the coaching and also with some of the stuff that John has been writing. So thank you very much for your contributions to this community and to this team, as well as helping us 
flesh out the science in such a way where it's more understandable and easily packaged for people uh, because honestly we've I've always struggled with getting people to actually understand what it is I'm talking about, but you just have a way of reaching those members of the audience that are typically unreachable. And I really appreciate that. And I think that moving forward, that dynamism will be something that will be a treasure, a real treasure to the community, being able to, you know, bring your perspective to the table to be able to add in additional um, vectors of understanding so that you know other FPs as well as FJs can also further adopt the science and come to a better understanding of themselves and others so that they can forgive themselves and love themselves so they can forgive and love others of course but regardless I think we're on a very good trajectory so, uh, and based on that, folks, I would like to announce that Chris will be doing some YouTube videos in the future talking about these concepts, as well as also reacting and providing his reactions to some of the things that he's reading or seeing within the community, which is going to be, you know, fantastic. Um, so, anyway, but thanks for coming, uh, good sir, and uh, thank you for being here. I, I see that the uh, members, the people who are here, were very happy to have you on the show, and so was I, especially since I was throwing some hum humdingers in your direction with these questions, these very elaborate questions. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I love it because it just it gave me another avenue to avenue to think about it. But no, I mean that was a that was a that was a hell of a introduction and a hell of a thanks. Um, and I do, I really appreciate it. Um, honestly, I'm, I'll say the same thing I've said since way back in the Discord days. Um, I genuinely believe in what you're doing. I genuinely believe that, A, the system is going to help people. And it already is. And I genuinely believe it's going to put us on a better track. And so I'm honestly just thankful to be able to be a part of it. And to be able to share my, my thoughts and my opinions on it and maybe help some people out personally. So I thank you for the platform. Thank you for your time and thanks Certainly. for doing what you do. Certainly. Um, I, we're going to be able to continue to change the world. So anyway, folks, uh, thanks for watching and thank you, Mr. Chris. And uh, we'll see you guys uh, next month for uh, continuing on season 18, Cognitive Mechanics. There's about five episodes left of the season before we move on to the next season for the email lectures. So stay tuned, and uh, thank you all for everything. And uh, I'll see you guys probably later tonight. Later.